Hello again. Uh, we are going to uh, be learning today about plant transport. And so uh, we're going to take a look at some uh, systems in the plant that help it move water, minerals, and sugars. And that's going to be the xylem and the phloem. Uh, now, uh, you'll also then be reviewing in a Google Doc. So the xylem is uh, going to be dead at maturity and it has two different cell types and what happens is as the cells they they are alive but as the cells get bigger and get to their final shape they die and what's left then is the cell wall so you end up getting these very thin uh tubes that are made of these trachea sorry tracheid cells and vessel elements and they are stacked next to each other in thousands of these little xylem tubes, especially in tree trunks. Uh, not so much in the herbaceous plants, not as many, uh, but certainly in tree trunks, you get thousands of them stacked next to each other. And they're really tiny. You can see in the microscopic image how tiny they are. Now that's gonna play a role, right? The tinier it is, uh, the better it's going to be at transporting water. So how does this work? What's happening? Uh, so, um, and what's really interesting about this is that this is almost entirely passive. Down at the roots, there's a little bit of active transport, but not with water, uh, with uh, the minerals that the plants need to uh, collect. So plants are going to passively transport water through their xylem. And they're going to be able to do this because of the property of water called cohesion. Adhesion is going to be there to help as well. And so what we end up having are two things that work together called cohesion and tension. So let's review cohesion. Cohesion is the tendency of water molecules to bond with each other. And, and you've got to remember that water contains partial positive and partial negative charges. This goes back to September when we were learning about the polarity of water. Hydrogen has a partial positive, oxygen has a partial negative. What that's going to mean is that just like the diagram here, they've got lots of little dashed lines that indicate an attraction. Now that means that where one water molecule goes, the other water molecule is going to follow. And I kind of create, uh, in my mind, I imagine back in kindergarten when you are in a line to go to recess, you um, are going to line up with each other and hold hands. And as you hold hands, if the teacher <coughs> starts you off on the line, this is important, you get pulled because she's moving, the teacher, or he's moving, and because you guys are all holding hands, you're then gonna pull each other along. And tension is a pulling force. So where one mo water molecule goes, another water molecule is going to follow. You might recall the magnetic water mo models that I had at the beginning of the year, where one water molecule goes, it's attracted. Adhesion is the water molecules being attracted to the xylem walls. So between cohesion and adhesion, uh, water is going to be uh, in one long continuous column. In fact, that's what we absolutely need to have. Uh, now, um, so I brought up the kindergarten line and it's somewhat obvious because I'm using the holding hands that if one student moves, the student behind them has to follow. But what's making them move in the first place, right? I mean, yeah, they're holding hands. So if they move, they're going to follow each other. They're going to be pulled. But what makes them actually get pulled in the first place? Well, that's the transpiration. Uh, so the transpiration is the evaporation of water. Um, and it happens at the leaves 
and some of the stems, but mainly at the leaves, through these holes called stomata. And the holes are just little pores, very microscopic. You can't really see them. And so the water molecules are going to come to the stomata and they're going to be evaporating because the air is very dry, uh, at least compared to the xylem. And so as the water molecules evaporate, the water molecules behind them get pulled because of the uh, cohesion. And so this entire column of water is going to move up uh, because of that evaporation. Uh, so uh, what's going to happen, let's go through these three stages. The water is going to be absorbed at the roots. And that's because the uh, roots are going to be grabbing the minerals. And then the water follows through um, by osmosis. And so water is absorbed. And then uh, the continuous column of water in the xylem and phloem means, sorry, the xylem means it's going to just move up as the water molecules at the top evaporate. So it's pretty wild. This does not need any energy except for at the very level of the cells down at the roots. And even that's not actively transporting water. It's just actively transporting the minerals into the cells and then water simply follows by osmosis. So the cohesion refers to the attraction of water molecules to each other. The tension is the, is the transpiration that's then pulling the water molecules up. So, um, what we end up seeing is that water is evaporating at the leaves, pulling the water up through that column, and then it evaporates through. And trees can lose a lot of water this way. And you're going to watch a little video by David Attenborough to kind of help you uh, see that. He does a nice job there. And then you have a little gif that, that shows you. Now, phloem, on the other hand, is a push. This is a pressure. Remember, cohe xylem was tension. The phloem is pressure. So the phloem is what's carrying the sugars from the photosynthesis uh, happening in the leaves throughout the plant. Now, xylem, the water in, um, in the xylem, only goes up the tree, but the phloem can go any direction it needs to. The sieve tubes and the um, companion cells, they're alive. Now the companion cells are there to help the sieve tube cells because they're just, they're not, they're alive, but they need help because they're so focused on carrying the sugar. So the sieve tube elements, again, they're kind of big tubes and then the companion cells are there to kind of help them out. Um, and you can see in the tree, the phloem is right underneath the bark. The xylem would be inside the tree making the rings where we'll talk about that when we get to the growth of the tree. <coughs> but what's true is that the phloem and xylem are going to be right next to each other. So this one's a little bit more complicated, but one thing I want you to think about is wherever the sugars go, water is going to follow by osmosis. So that's kind of the key to understanding this. Remember, water is going to flow from an area of high concentration of water to a low concentration of water. The more sugar you have, the lower concentration of water there is. So what plants can do, which is pretty darn clever, what plants do is they don't have to, um, they don't have to expend that much energy. Well, all they've got to do is make a high concentration of sugar and then the water's going to flow in by osmosis. And then that's going to push the sugars where they need to go. So remember in phloem, it's a pressure system. So what the plant simply d does is manipulate the sugar concentration and let the water flow do the rest. Now, what we say, we call it a source to sink. 
the source is obvious wherever wherever the sugar is is the source now you might think well that's obvious it's the leaves right and normally all throughout the year you're correct right the leaves are photosynthesizing they're building the sugars uh, but what I want you to think about is right now in early spring there are no leaves on the trees so how are they getting the energy to build their leaves? And if you are thinking you might catch on like, oh yeah, wait, we're, you know, they're not photosynthesizing yet. They don't have any leaves. And so the answer is they stored their sugars down at the roots over the winter. So for that time period, the source of the sugars would be the roots. So, uh, but, and so that goes back to the idea that phloem can move in any direction. Phloem can move sugars up from the winter time to spring. They can move the sugars up the tree or spring, summer, fall. They're going to be making the sugars in the leaves and then moving it wherever it needs to go. So what what they're gonna do is actively transport the sugars into the area that they want them to be but they're gonna need help and that's where the water comes in so they're gonna start transporting the sugars but then the water is gonna push the rest of the sugars where they need to go so the act of transport kind of starts it happening and then, uh, it, and then the water uh, pushes, uh, and the water is going to be coming from the xylem. So it's kind of this dance of where the sugars are, and then as the sugars move, the water chases it, and and remember that's a pressure. And uh, there, so there's going to be a couple of uh, little videos for you to help kind of understand this one on maple syrup making, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, uh, one on plant transport. So, uh, and then you've got a couple of questions to answer. So, uh, hope that helps understand, helps you understand the processes.